Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I have the I have the privilege of getting to welcome everybody this morning. I am so happy that I was able to greet each one of you as you came in, and I want to say hi to everyone online. It is great that as one church we can be together, whether we're here in the rec center or some of us are at home. And so uh, I just want to say that I'm so happy to see the church family, and you're just welcome to church together. We are going to um, want everyone at home to be able to say hi to people here and vice versa. So Helene is going to help us out, and we're going to, if I could ask the audience here to say hi as she pans around the room, and you all can say hi to those online. And those online, please use your comments and greet each other this morning and greet those that are here in the rec center. Show hi. hi. Hello. And then y'all can be typing hello, hello. <laughs> so there really are people here. And we really are together and we're moving forward with some progress. So that's a, a positive thing. All right. Love you all. See you soon. All right. Thank you, Jen. So for those uh, who are watching at home, you have the advantage of not uh, wearing the masks and you can be close to your family and uh, good, good for you. But it's good to see everyone today as we begin our time together. Would you bow your hearts and heads and let us pray together? Let's let's pray. Lord, I thank you for the opportunity to come and worship. Lord, we realize that that is a gift that we have that not everybody has. And so we want to take advantage of that today. And as we gather, we want to say thank you. Well, we know that there are some great and difficult challenges in our world. But we say thank you that you're with us in them. We say thank you that you know the way through them. And we say thank you that you choose to use people like us, your church, to make a difference and to dispense your love. Lord, I pray that you would bless those who are gathered in this room. And I pray that you would bless those who are gathered in their homes. Lord, we pray that that same Holy Spirit that is present here with us will be present in living rooms and uh, gardens and yards and cars and wherever people are gathering today. Lord, we commit this time to you. And we pray that you would be enthroned and the praises of your people, and we ask and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So uh, our new normal is praising the Lord, as important that it, as that is, it, just a little differently. Um, as, a, as a singer and a chorus teacher, I've been reading dozens of articles, every article that comes out on singing in COVID. And so as we move forward, I just want you to know that singing is still, there's still a big question mark. It seems to be a super spreading activity. And so that's why we're wearing masks and that's why we're avoiding singing in here. But we can still worship the Lord, right? So as we, as I sing and as you hum to your mask or whatever you want to do, let's just let the truth of God well up in our hearts but and let these we words can still worship the Lord, right? empower you. So Amen. as we, as I sing and as you hum to your mask or whatever you want to do, let's just let the truth of God well up in our hearts and let these words empower you. So as we, as I sing and as you hum to your mask Yeah. 
to confess, Mike, that I was uh, trying to sing I under my you. mouth. You heard me? I hope people at home didn't hear me. <laughs> you can tell because the uh, went up and steamed my glasses. So uh, I love having yeah. a singing pastor, amen? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Amen. yeah. S- singing in the loosest term of the word. I <laughs> yeah. So we just want to take a minute today, Adam here and myself, and give a little update on some of our reconciliation. <laughs> <laughs> Helena is behind the camera going this way, so there you go. Is your wife telling you what to do again? Oh, That's, uh, <laughs> we just want to give you a little update on some of the conversations that we've been having and some of the things that we've been thinking through uh, in terms of the racial reconciliation challenge that is before us. I've been a part of numerous conversations this week uh, regionally and locally here in Castleberry, and our pastors 
uh, got together uh, electronically with some of our community leaders and law enforcement personnel. And on June 27th, we're going to host an event at Divine Truth Christian Fellowship um, called United We Stand, where we'll have different voices um, talking about how uh, they understand the situation and how uh, they're working to bring some reconciliation to this tragic evil that is tearing our country apart. So that's one thing that we're doing locally. But as Adamir and I have been talking about what healing looks like in this uh, situation, as we've both listened to each other, we've decided and kind of come to the conclusion that our first initial responses are like two sides of the healing coin. There is a lot that needs to happen and we all need to be a part of um, crossing this bridge and uh, building reconciliation. But as we've been talking, we felt that the first step starts within us. And so for me, my first step to understanding and becoming part of the solution of this problem is to search my own heart and to listen well and to hear the heart and the hurt of those who have been victims of racism in our society. So I've made a commitment that I'm going to do all I can to listen and to study. One of my challenges is I'm going to read a book a month on racial reconciliation. And I think you'll see some of the fruit of that coming out in my uh, teaching and preaching and things like that. But I'm putting myself in a place where I want to reflect, where I want to understand and where I want to listen. That's my side of this uh, first phase of seeking to understand for me. Adamir has a different starting place, though, in this process. Yeah, I do. Um, like Pastor Andy was saying, a lot of it. I don't think this is on. I'm going to jump on. All right. Like uh, Pastor Andy was saying, it, it's two sides of the same coin. And for me, as I was talking about a few weeks ago, ultimately, we're talking about lifetimes of hurt and pain. And to get to a point where you can reconcile that, first you have to deal with the actual grief that comes from that. And as I was beginning to go through that process and sharing, I realized, well, I haven't necessarily processed what the gospel means in each one of those, right? Uh, there's a version of the gospel that I was hearing, but I wasn't associating with my own worth in society. And I have to get to a point where the way that I'm viewing God, the way that I'm viewing Christ is just as powerful as it's meant to be. And so reflecting on that and dealing with each one of the hurt and pain and say, all right, I, I have processed to, or through it. And that doesn't necessarily mean that everything's all great, but it does mean I'm at a point where I can share. Because if I'm not at a point where I can share, I can't expect people to understand. And so for my side of the coin and, and uh, honestly, a lot of the black community, we, we have to process and say, yeah, this stinks, but I have to be able to communicate it. And I, I can only do that in a way if I understand what God is telling me and my full worth and value. And I, I know that those moments don't define myself in the eyes of God. Does that make sense to you? Mm -hmm. All right. So we're committed to doing all that we can to build bridges. Uh, and in that spirit, let's, let's pray together. Father, every single person in this room, on the other side of the screen, on this planet is made in your image. Your word tells us that we are made from one blood. And that we are redeemed by the one blood of Jesus Christ. Lord, as we seek to be ministers of reconciliation in all kinds of ways, I pray first that you would help all of us realize the worth and the value that you have assigned to us. Lord, remind us today that we were made in your image. 
Remind us today that you know everything about us and love us anyway. Remind us that all of us have fallen short. All of us are in need of forgiveness. All of us are in need of repentance and redemption. Remind us that you give those things to us freely. Lord, as your church, we do pray for this world. We pray into this race situation. And we pray that you would call us all to search ourselves. We pray that you would bring peace. We pray that you would build bridges. We pray for our COVID-infected world. Lord, we pray that you would still continue to find us wise and diligent. Lord, as we see the numbers rising, would you remind us of how important it is that we keep safe and we do all in our power to keep each other safe? Remind us of that sacred responsibility as those who are called to love our neighbors well. Lord, we pray for those who are in need of our prayers today. Lord, we confess that this has been a hard time. That maybe for some it's been a time that's shaken faith. And for all of us, that it's erased some of the emotional boundary that we have. Lord, would you give us your peace? Would you give us a peace that causes us to trust? Would you give us the peace that only you can give? Father, I pray for my friends in this room, and I pray you would bless them. I pray for my friends who are watching online, and I pray that you would be with them and comfort them, and that in these moments together, you would help all of us to reconnect with you. Holy Spirit, we invite you to bind up the brokenhearted, to give freedom to those who are trapped, to pour out forgiveness when injustice has built a wall. Lord, we pray that as you do that, you would first do a work in all of our lives. And we ask and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's worship together again. Uh, if you're here again, feel free to mumble into your mask. But if you're home, uh, wake the neighbors with your singing. darkness surrounded by silence so oh, where where have I gone I walk to reality losing its grip on me oh where where have I gone cause I can't see you waited 
it for me, I searched for you. What took me so long? I was looking outside. As if love would ever want to hide I'm finding I was wrong Cause I can't feel the wind Before it hits my skin And you call it and you shout it All through my tears Now I'm breathing in Washed away my blindness Now I'm breathing in And breathing out I'm alive again I'm alive again Cause I want you Yes, I want you And I need you And I'll do whatever I have to Just to get it through Cause I love you Yes, I love you Now I'm breathing in and breathing out I'm alive again And you shattered my darkness Washed away my blindness Now I'm breathing in and breathing out I'm alive again Oh, I'm alive again Honestly, I love the opportunity to come and do these small little visual messages because uh, something about breaking it down to the simplest form can be really powerful. And honestly, it's a great way to get the kids involved too. Uh, later on, we're going to be talking about renewal. And your heart tends to be really the core of everything. Yes, physically, for it pumps your blood and everything like that, but from your heart is an outward expression. And sometimes we forget that. And even with, and I'll have Pastor Andy be my little Vanna White right now, <laughs> and pretend you're my right hand, right? And you're going through life and Christ isn't necessarily a part of your life. And as you go on and you come into situations, guess what? It gets dirty. <laughs> it gets mucky and becomes a mess. And not only does it begin to cover you, it's what people start to see. And you keep going on and it happens even more. See that? It's sticky, it's uncomfortable, and you start to live that way. And no matter what I do, I could shake, try to figure it out, but I can't clean myself. And there comes a moment in each one of our lives where we just have to have, honestly, a come to Jesus moment. And we have to recognize that the only way that we become clean, that we become restored, is by entering into Christ. And we make it up as a really difficult thing. But really what we're saying is, Lord, I understand that I can't clean myself. And it's all in you. See how simple that was? And though our life might get messy and has ups and downs, Christ is still with us and within, within us. And every time we're in those situations, every time 
we now understand where to go back to. And that expression coming from our heart is what others see. And everything is made clean again. Uh, I'll move it on to Pastor Andy to pray as we get into the word. All right. That's fine. I was afraid I was going to have to carry that sing with me. So thanks for, thanks for taking it. Let's pray. Jesus, we're so grateful that you come and you cleanse us. And you cleanse us by forgiveness. And the wrong that we do that sticks to us, that changes us, and makes us difficult, ugly people, washed away Lord we thank you that you didn't come just to wash our hands but that you came to give us new life new birth I pray today that as we open your word that you would come and be born again in us today. That our old self, with all its sin, with all its ugliness, with all its dirt and darkness, would be washed away as we respond to your command that we must be born again. Lord, as Brian comes to share with us, pray that you would bless him and that you would encourage him and that you would equip him. I pray that his words would be your words. And Lord, the voice we hear will be the voice of the Holy Spirit so lovingly and tenderly and powerfully speaking to us. Lord, come and speak to us through your servant Brian. And we ask and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I don't know if I'm appropriately wearing this mask. Um, maybe it looks like little Santa, does it? No? All right, that wasn't funny. I <laughs> just, <laughs> just <laughs> don't know what to do with that. I don't know whether to hang it. Mike's got his mask uh, hung on his music stand when he's not wearing it. It's kind of cool. All right, so um, I am thrilled that uh, Brian is going to come and share with us today. I was looking around the room. I didn't see. But there he is over there. <laughs> I got nervous that he bolted out the door or something. But I'm so thrilled and excited that Brian is going to come and share God's word to us today because God loves writing and creating redemptive stories. About 14 years ago, Brian was just uh, finishing seminary and praying through uh, some opportunities to go into vocational ministry. But there were some things that happened in Brian's life that derailed that a little bit, and God put him on a different path, a, a wonderful path in many ways, because it was through there that uh, he met Laurie, and they had their two children, Kyle and Caitlin, and it was Kyle's birthday on Friday, right, Kyle? Yes. Uh, happy birthday, Kyle. Kyle, how old were you? Nine. Nine. I had him down to 17. That just kind of shows. Uh, uh, so, so God was on that path that Brian took. But it's been 13 years since Brian came and shared God's word before a congregation. And when we met a couple of years ago, it became very obvious to me that us as a church could become part in Brian's redemptive story because God is writing a redemptive story in all of us, right? So I'm excited to um, hear Brian share today. He's a man of God's word. But as he comes to share, he's also living out this wonderful redemptive story that God is writing in him. So if you're at home, type in your keyboard. Hey, Brian, it's good to see you. And if you're here in person, give Brian a round of applause as he comes to share with us. Uh, 
I don't quite know how to put this, but Nicodemus was kind of a big deal. I mean, people knew him. He had many leather-bound books. His furniture smelled of a rich mahogany. Whenever Nicodemus would go to the temple, he didn't have to park in the uh, parking garage with everybody else. He had a VIP parking spot right next to the wall. Um, when Nicodemus went to work at the Sanhedrin every day, he would walk inside the lobby. He would pass by the receptionist, and he would go by the fountain. And uh, there was a big flow chart of pictures of all of the 71 members of the Sanhedrin, and his picture was on top. And so um, Nicodemus was a big deal. And years later, um, after the fact, Nicodemus' friends were surprised to find out that one night that he had sought out a meeting with Jesus, who people called the Christ. See, Jesus wasn't exactly the type of guy that uh, Nicodemus would go hang out with at Einstein Bagel. Uh, Jesus was a troublemaker. Jesus was a rabble rouser. Some people thought Jesus was a heretic. Um, Nicodemus was a member of Jerusalem high society. He moved with the, in the circles of the rich and the powerful. Jesus was from Galilee, from Nazareth. Nicodemus didn't hang out with Galileans. Galileans put their trailers up on cinder blocks and roll their cigarette packs up in their shirt sleeves. All right? And plus, Nicodemus studied under some of the best rabbis in Jerusalem. He had all of the academic qualifications that you would need to be one of the most powerful people in Jerusalem. Jesus was a carpenter. He's framing baseboards, man. Nicodemus didn't hang out with carpenters, but here he was one night meeting with Jesus because people didn't respond to Nicodemus the way they responded to Jesus. Um, he, so he had to seek him out in the middle of the night, and what he would find out from Jesus would affect him for the rest of his life. Um, so if you have your Bibles or your smartphone or your tablet, or if you want to open another tab on your computer, please open to John chapter 3, verse 1 through 15, or Google John chapter 3, or ask Alexa to say John chapter 3. Just please don't ask Alexa to preach the sermon because that would be very disappointing if a robot preached a better sermon than I did. Now, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a member of the Jewish ruling council, he came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the miraculous signs you are doing if God were not with him. In reply, Jesus declared, I tell you the truth, no one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. How can a man be born when he is old? Nicodemus asked. Surely he cannot enter a second time into his mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, I tell you the truth, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and the spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but spirit gives birth to spirit. You should not be surprised at me saying, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it has come from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the spirit. How can this be? Nicodemus asked. You are Israel's teacher, said Jesus, and you do not understand these things. I tell you the truth. We speak of what we know and we testify to what we have seen. But still people do not accept our testimony. I have spoken to you of earthly things, and you do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, so the Son of Man has been lifted up, so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray that you bless this time we have together, bless the word, and bless the uh, person who's speaking right now. May they, your words come out, not mine. And all these things I ask in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So um, we don't know, inconspicuous by its absence in this uh, Bible reading is probably the most famous Bible verse of all, John 3.16. Um, it's one of the first Bible verses you learn when you're a kid. Uh, football players put it on their eye black. Um, wrestlers quote it. Guys put on clown wigs and go to sporting events with John 3.16 signs. Um, this guy used to go to uh, sporting events in the 80s with a clown wig and a John 316 sign. I'm not really sure what his motivation was. Um, if he wanted people to read John 316, he wanted people to be aware of John 316. 
Um, he wanted to be on television, maybe all of those things. I'm not really sure what kind of conversation he had with his wife before he left the house. Uh, Hi, I'm going to the game. You got your clown wig? Yeah. You got your John 316 sign? Yeah. Okay, don't forget, you have to reprogram that new reactor tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> um, but uh, So I wanted to focus more on all of the verses that come before the verse that um, everybody knows so well. So uh, we're going to talk about those today. So first of all, um, being born again is a gift. So why did Nicodemus come to Jesus at night? Well, there's a lot of different theories about that. Some people think it's because, you know, he didn't want to be seen with Jesus out in the open. And before anybody starts posting negative Yelp reviews about this sermon, I know Nicodemus didn't eat at Einstein bagel, and I know that Galileans don't put their trailer parks on cinder blocks, okay? But um, he did come to Jesus at night, maybe just to talk to him on his own. Um, we don't know a lot about Nicodemus. Uh, the book of John is the only place in the Bible that he appears in. Um, we do know he was a member of the Sanhedrin. Um, Nicodemus was probably not his birth name. Nicodemus is a Greek name uh, that means conqueror of the people, which may give you some insight into his aspirations. Quite a flex to name yourself conqueror of the people. It'd be like if I changed my name to uh, Max Power or Mr. Perfect. Um, he, was a, he was a member of the Sanhedrin. So the Sanhedrin, every town in ancient Israel had a Sanhedrin. There were small Sanhedrins that had 25 members. He was part of the Grand Sanhedrin in Jerusalem, which had 71 members. Um, he, uh, the Sanhedrin was like the most powerful lawmaking and judicial body in Jerusalem at the time. It was kind of like if you took Congress, the Supreme Court, and Dr. Phil and molded them all into one. And in case you were wondering, yes, Dr. Phil would have absolutely been a member of the Sanhedrin. Nicodemus, what were you thinking? Except uh, after the trial, instead of sending people to jail, Dr. Phil would have just sent people to the ranch. Like one person got that joke. All right, good. We got a fan. All right. So, uh, so being born again, um, you know, Nicodemus comes to him and he says, "We know that you have come from God." So Jesus, you know, fame had kind of spread around Jerusalem. People weren't sure what to make of him at that point, and um, Jesus says. I tell you the truth, no one can see the kingdom of God unless he's born again. And Nicodemus says, how can somebody be born again when he was old? Um, some people wonder whether or not Nicodemus actually wondered if Jesus was saying you actually have to be physically born again, or maybe Nicodemus got the metaphor and he was just playing along. But um, the term being born again would have been different back then than it is now. Being born again is kind of a loaded term. Um, you know, if you hear somebody, you know, especially in the news or the media, if somebody describes somebody as a born again Christian, it's like, oh, that guy's a born again Christian, as opposed to an every other weekend Christian or a come whenever I feel like a Christian. Um, but back then, they had no concept of, of being born again because to a Jewish person living in first century Israel, um, salvation was your birthright. If you were born Jewish, you were going to heaven. It didn't matter what. You didn't need any type of repentance. You didn't need any type of um, ceremony. It was just you were born Jewish. You were going for heaven. Um, as a matter of fact, there was an ancient, uh, there was a saying among them that Abraham actually stood at the gates of Hades to make sure that anybody of Jewish birth didn't enter in accidentally. Um, so this concept of being born again would have been quite foreign to him. Um, but it makes me think of how we, we view salvation as an inheritance versus a gift. Now we believe that, and Jesus taught, that salvation is a gift that's available to all of us if we ask and we believe. Um, but how many people have you ever met that thought that they were a Christian just because of their of their birth. I was born into this church. I was raised in that church. My father was a Lutheran. My mother was a Presbyterian. What does that make you? A Presbyterian? I mean, um, 
but it's not an inheritance. It's something that is given to us freely if we ask for it. Um, so being born again is also a lifestyle. So what does it mean to be born again? After you ask the question, how can I be born a second time? Jesus says, I tell you the truth, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and the spirit. So there's a lot of debate about what Jesus means when he says be born of water and the spirit. Um, water would have been reflecting in the, the idea of baptism, being baptized and for remission of your sins. And then he goes one step further than that, being born of the spirit, meaning that the Holy Spirit dwells within you, meaning it's a, it's a choice, it's a lifestyle, it's something that you embrace every single day. You know, some people treat their uh, church membership like their Netflix membership. You know, for the uh, low, low price of eight ninety nine a month, you can be a member of Netflix. They're not paying me for that endorsement, by the way. Um, which, by the way, you know, kids don't know how good they got with Netflix. I mean, you turn on Netflix, and then you want to watch something, and you just click on it. And you click on it, and then that's you watch the first episode, and you start at the beginning. And then when the first episode goes is done, you just roll right into the next episode. And then the third one, and then the fourth one, and you start at the beginning, and then you go to the end. So when I was a kid, back in the olden days, uh, if I wanted to, say, watch Inspector Gadget, I better be sitting in front of my television with the television on Nickelodeon at 6 p.m. to watch Inspector Gadget. And if I wasn't in front of my television at 6 p.m. with the channel turned on Nickelodeon, you know what I wasn't doing that day? I wasn't watching Inspector Gadget. And then, you know, one day, and you never, you never, no beginning, there was no end. You just sat down and there was an episode and there was it. You just watched the episode and then it just existed. And then one day you sit down in front of your television with the channel turned on Nickelodeon at 6 p.m. and it's gone. And they replace it with Doug or Rugrats. And then there was no explanation and they never told you why it stopped. And there was no last episode. And you never found out if Inspector Gadget ever defeated the evil Dr. Claw. You never even got to see the evil Dr. Claw's face. And why did Penny and Brain always do all the work that Inspector Gadget did all the credit? It doesn't make any sense. How could they do this to children? I mean, I'm not bitter about it or anything. I'm just, I'm just saying that um, kids got it good these days. So, uh, But, you know, Netflix is something that you stare when you want. You just open it up. And, and there it is. And then when you're done with it, you just close it again. But that's not being born again. Being born again is not something that you just open up whenever you feel like it. It's a lifestyle. It's a choice. It's something that you do every single day. Um, you know, I got a uh, card in the mail a few years ago, and um, it's for a church. And the church said, come to our church. We have carnival games, and we have prizes, and we have Chick-fil-A coupons, and uh, we have all this fun stuff, which is fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But, you know, you could do all that stuff at Fun Spot and not have to listen to some guy preach a sermon. Um, I mean, you know, every so often that guy from TV might come around and go, it's huge, but that's about it. Um, but you wouldn't want to go to Fun Spot every week. Well, some of you might, but most of you wouldn't want to do that. Um, you know, if you're not sacrificing something, if you're not giving up something for the sake of the gospel, then what are you really doing? Yes, it's a free gift. Yes, it's something that, that Jesus died on the cross for us for. But if your life doesn't change in some way, what does the gospel really mean to you? So that's why I say that it's a lifestyle. And then um, being born again is also a calling. Um, in verse 14, Jesus makes a reference to Moses. He said, just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, so the Son of Man must be lifted up. This is a, uh, this is a reference to the uh, Exodus narrative. Um, have any of you ever seen the, uh, the old Ten Commandments movie, the, the Charlton Heston version? I loved that movie when I was a kid. I used to watch it every single Easter. And uh, I love that part in the movie where Charlton Heston goes up and he gets the Ten Commandments and then he comes down off the mountain 
and uh, all the Israelites decided it was party time, and they were partying, and uh, Moses gets righteous in the nation, and he takes the tablets, and he says, If you will not live by the Lord, you will die by the Lord. He takes the tablets, and he chucks them down on the ground, and like flames start shooting up, and the ground opens up, and then, uh, yeah, that's a that was one of my favorite parts. And uh, there, was this, there was this little guy in the movie, that would always show up next to Charlton Heston every time something would go wrong. And he would be like, where's he got now, Moses? And uh, I, after I watched the movie, I, I read the book of Exodus, and then I got all the way through, and I was like, wait a second, that guy's not in Exodus. It's like, movies make things up? <gasps> it shook me to my core when I was a child that movies would lie to me like that. Um, but he makes this, um, Jesus makes this, uh, reference here to Numbers chapter 21. And at this point, they had uh, crossed the Red Sea. You know, you think about think about what the ancient Israelites went through when they were in Egypt. They dealt with disease, plague, pestilence, oppression. Sound familiar? Job loss. You know, it wasn't like they had stable employment waiting for them on the other side of the Red Sea when, uh, when they left Egypt. Which makes me wonder, like, how did they uh, how did they fill out their job applications afterwards when they got to the part where it said, "May we contact your former employer?" No. <laughs> well, why not? Um, they drowned chasing me across the Red Sea. Um, okay, so I guess uh, reason for leaving previous job would be job dissatisfaction. Um, and uh, so they get to the desert, and so they start complaining. Because, you know, they didn't like their old boss, but now they don't like their new boss, and they don't like the menu of what they're being served, and they're hot and sticky, and they're like, you know, why did you bring us out into the, into the desert to kill us? They've been wandering around for 40 years, which would be really disconcerting, you know. It's like, well, what are we going to do today? Wander. Well, what are we doing tomorrow? Wandering. Are we headed anywhere? Eventually, but you aren't going to be around to see it. Um, so snakes come around and start biting people because they start complaining too much. I probably wouldn't have been any better. Honestly, I probably would have been the first one bitten by the snake. The first time I started complaining about vending machines with the lack, you know, not having Mountain Dew in the vending machines and the snake would have bitten me first. So, um, Moses is instructed to build a staff and put a copper snake around it. Now snakes were an illustration of evil in the Bible. And bronze was a symbol of judgment. So the bronze snake was a symbol of judgment. And uh, but here's the thing. You actually had to look at the snake to be healed. And you had to have the faith that the snake would heal you. So, you know, Moses could put up a snake with a copper serpent. And you'd be like, oh, right, copper serpent, that'll work. Yeah. And if you didn't have faith, nothing would have happened. Um, so that's why it's important to have, to have faith um, in Jesus that you can be born again. Um, do you believe, do you guys believe that you have a calling? Not just a gift, not just a, not just a purpose. Let me tell you something. Every single person in this room and every person watching online, you have a calling. There is something that God wants you to do. You know, and that there are three groups of people. There are some people who know what their calling is, and they're doing it. And God bless you. That's awesome. There are some people who don't know what their calling is. And that's okay, because when the time's right, when you're ready to hear it, God's going to give you your calling. And then there are some people who know exactly what their calling is and just don't want to do it. And for a long time... I fit into that third group. If there was a world champion of knowing what your calling is and not doing it, I would have the belt. The strap would be around my shoulder right now. Okay? For a long time, I didn't want to do what I was called to do. And you know what? I looked in every other direction to find fulfillment. I looked in every other direction to try to find something to do other than the calling that I was supposed to do. And finally... When I looked at the Lord, and he wasn't standing there with a snake on a stick. He was standing there. He was on a cross. 
when I looked at Jesus on the cross and I accepted what my calling was, I knew that's where I was where the I was where the Lord wanted me to be. You know, and today some of you in here, you know, we're all we're all wandering through the desert right now. Um this is probably the most difficult time in all of our lives, in all of anybody's lives. Um, and just when you think you escaped on the other side of the Red Sea, you know, snakes come around and start biting you. Um, but let me tell you, Canaan's on the other side of the mountain. And you just have to believe that, that you're coming to the end of the mountain. The mountain's there for all of us. If you're not doing what the Lord wants you to do, if you're rejecting this calling, look to Jesus on the cross. Look to him. You could be looking in every other direction, but he is standing right in front of you. So what I would say to you right now is, if, if you hear this message and you believe it, don't wait another second. Find somebody to pray with. Put it in the comments online. Call somebody. Pray, pray by yourself right now. Ask Jesus to be born again. Accept the born again lifestyle. And some of you are ready to hear that right now. And some of you aren't. And that's okay. Because at some point, you might not be ready to hear it. But like Nicodemus, you might need to go to Jesus by yourself in the dark. But if you do that, he's going to ask you to come into the light. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, um, thank you for this time that we have together. Thank you for the message, and thank you for your word. I pray, Lord, that we would all understand and we would all know what it means to be a, have a born-again lifestyle, Lord. And I'll pray, I ask, Lord, that all of us, wherever we're looking around to, whatever we're looking for, may we know that you are on a cross and you're standing right in front of us, Lord. And all we need to do is look to you. And all these things I ask in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm.
reminded of that verse when the disciples asked you, Lord, what is the work that we should be doing? And you said something so counterintuitive. They were expecting a marching order to go out and do something. And you said the work of God is to believe. And Lord, we realize that the foundation of all of our work that we do for you, the foundation of us reflecting your glory is in that first step, in that being born again and looking at the cross looking at your sacrifice and realizing that no matter how different we are, that we find our unity, we find our identity, and we find our solidarity in you and your love for us, and that we're adopted sons and daughters of the eternal King of glory. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Thank you, Mike, for leading us. Hey, let's give uh, Brian a round of applause and thank him for sharing. It is not an easy thing to do in this COVID world with the, the live and the people and the whole thing. But Brian, that was a great message. Uh, being born again is this gift from God that I hope you will all receive. It's a gift that, that births a lifestyle and that comes with a calling. And Brian, we thank you for reminding us of that today. As we conclude our time together, I want to thank you for joining us. For those who have uh, filled this room here, we appreciate it. Did we have anyone in the overflow yet? Not yet. We do have some overflow seating as well if uh, uh, you're ready to come back next week and would certainly welcome you. But thanks for joining us online as well. It means uh, so much to us. A few quick announcements. First of all, uh, I invite all of you to join us online this week. Uh, we'll have a, a moment of hope on Thursday morning, which is a, a devotional that I will be leading. Love for you to tune in there as well. And also on Wednesday night, we have our Zoom prayer meeting. And again, all are invited to join us at 7 o'clock. Check your email for the access link for that. If you're not getting our emails, uh, go to our Facebook page. There's a tab that uh, says sign me up and also on our web page as well, because that's really the best way to communicate together during this time of distancing. Uh, also, I know some of you have come prepared to uh, worship God with your gifts, and we will have a basket by the door as you leave in a little bit. And those listening online, if you would like to give uh, to the work of God through this church, you can do so uh, online at our website, www.ourchurchtogether. Also, I want to remind all the kids and families 
that tonight at five o'clock, Miss Jen will be hosting a Zoom meeting children's church. Uh, we still don't feel comfortable holding our children's ministry uh, here in person. So this is the next best thing. And Jen does such a, a good job engaging and connecting with the kids. So that's at five o'clock tonight. Uh, again, let's say uh, goodbye to our friends online, first of all, before we dismiss here. So friends, uh, would you receive this benediction? Let's pray. Jesus, you are so clear. As you said to Nicodemus, you say to us, we must be born again. Help us to receive that gift. Help us to live that lifestyle. Help us to pursue that calling for your name and your sake. Lord, would you bless us and keep us? Would you make your face to shine upon us? Would you lift up your countenance to us that we may go from this place knowing your peace and in your power to serve this broken world? And we ask and we pray. And all of God's people online and in person said, Amen. Thanks for joining us online.